<clears throat> What's up, Internet? This is Corey from Bitfire, and I've spent the last 20 years of my software career hacking Internet applications. Today, I'm going to show you how to take your website security from this to this. Check it out. So today we're going to be talking about HTTP security headers and in order to follow along with this you're going to need a PHP website running PHP at least 7.1, access to the internet, a login to your web server, and either Git or Composer to download the software, and the ability to edit a text file. So the website we're going to be working with today is the bitslip6.com website. This website I use to do security consulting. And we're going to go ahead and log into our server now. And we're going to download the Bitfire web application firewall to add the HTTP headers to turn these grades, F and F, into A's. So our software is hosted at var www bitslip, and I already have a copy of Composer installed out here. So we're going to go ahead and use Composer to require bitslip6 slash bitfire and that will download ver the latest version which at this time is 1.04 to your web server. Before you use it you're going to want to run one script. This one script will change the secrets and encryption keys used in the software in your configuration file. So Composer installs all the software in a directory called vendor and we have a link here in this bin directory. So all you need to do is run this update key script and it will give you the path to the configuration file that it just, it just uh, updated. And now we're gonna edit that file using our favorite text editor, Vim. And we're gonna change this one line. It says Bitfire enabled false. We're gonna set that to true. This will allow the software to run by default. If this is off, the Bitfire firewall will do nothing. And after we're done editing this, I'm gonna show you what this does to the security headers, and then we'll come back and turn on two more options that will lock it down. We'll have additional videos going over all these other options and how you can use it to improve your site security. So after we've configured the firewall, all we need to do is include it on our site. And to do that, we're gonna edit one file. We're gonna edit our PHP INI. So we're gonna open up Etsy PHP 7.2. On my server, I'm using FPM. Now the location to your PHP and I, INI file may be different. If you don't know, you can run the PHP info function on your server, and that will give you the full path to your INI file. But probably if you're using Ubuntu or some other uh, Debian derivative, you're gonna have a path that looks similar to this. Uh, so we're going to use sudo because we need to edit that file as root. This file should not be owned by the web user or whoever it is you're on, on the server as. And we're going to look for a line here called auto prepend. And this line's auto prepend file was going to append the firewall before any script runs on our server. So this is going to run the Bitfire application for every single page, no matter where it is on the server. And so we go to insert mode and we're going to paste our config file. Obviously, we can't run an include an INI file as our PHP code. There's a startup file called startup.php. I'll show you what that looks like if you browse over to GitHub. There's this startup file right here, which defines a couple paths and uh, some blocking. And we're going to include that. And now before that takes effect, we need to restart PHP. So we're going to sudo etsy php fpm, and we're going to restart. You could also use systemd if your server uses systemd, but any way that you use to restart PHP, press enter, restart's okay. Let's make sure our website loads, and it does. And now if we inspect, we go to network, and we'll do a full reload, control shift R, and that does a full fresh reload and we look at our response headers, we can see a few additional headers here. 
and we go to scan results and we scan we've been upgraded from an F to a D but a D that's not quite going to do it for us we want an A so in order to get that A we're going to come over here and we're going to edit our config file we're going to change this option here force SSL for one year this does two things this is going to force a redirect from HTTP to HTTPS this will require anyone coming to our website if they get an a non-encrypted link it will redirect them to an SSL encrypted link and we're also going to enable the default feature policy the default feature policy takes all features and makes it so they can be used from JavaScript hosted on our server but not from JavaScript hosted on other servers which could potentially be malicious so we're going to turn that to true and we're going to rescan our site There we go. Just took it a second. We're going to reload and rescan our site. And if we go over to the Mozilla Observatory and we reinitiate a scan, the observatory is not quite as quick as securityheaders.com. And we've got a B on the Mozilla Observatory. It says, You're doing a wonderful job so far. Now, the only thing we're missing on the observatory is the content security policy. If you want to enable this feature, go over to bitfire.co and you can download the pro version of the software which includes the ability to edit the content security policy. If you want to find out more about what these headers are, go check out the Bitfire wiki page which has information on what each one of these headers are and what they do and how to configure them using the Bitfire firewall. Hope you found this useful. Look forward to more videos coming out soon. See you guys later. Bye.